Kyle Meredith with uh, two of the most amazing artists that have come onto the scene, I would say, in the past five, seven, ten years at this point. Uh, I don't know how long you guys are going on it, but First Aid Kids here at Forecastle 2015, welcome. Thank you. It's, it's great to see yeah. you both. How lo actually, how long has it been now that, when, when, when did the officialness happen? Um, eight years. Seven eight years? Eight years, right? Uh, sorry, I'm bad at, yeah, oh yeah, eight years. Yeah. So, October 2007. Yep. You guys are coming up on the decade anniversary soon. Yeah, yeah we are. Yeah. yeah. Anniversaries and, and big shows and celebrations and whatever else. Oh yeah, we'll see. We'll see we what we do. Found it yet? No. 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 I mean, it's two years away, but. Uh... What I know, you guys have been so busy on this Stay Gold tour, and there's been a ton of uh, festival adventuring. I, I, I did see some sumo wrestling going on at some point. Uh, one of you guys held the other one. It looked like in a sleeper hold, a chokehold, or something. And uh, like, who wins on these kind of fights? Oh, Joanna. Joanna, yeah, I won. Yeah, yeah, yeah cause I, I go she's, all in. She's relentless. <laughs> Is there a strategy? Do you have a strategy? No, I just go for it. Yeah. Just grab everything and kick. Yes. Yeah. Um, on the serious side, I, I know it has been an exciting year for you guys. Uh, the Emmy Lou Harris thing was really, really cool. So you've got to do a thing where you're playing. And I know it wasn't the first time. I know it was the first time you guys had to do that. But here you are playing for one of your biggest heroes. Like, what kind of nerves go into that? Um, all of them. All the nerves. All the nerves. <laughs> yeah, no, I mean, it's just... Uh, it's just kind of the scariest thing that uh, you can imagine. Um, but it's also such a huge honor, and you get to like perform one of your favorite songs. And so, uh, yeah, I don't know. You just try to focus on the song and, and not on the person that's sitting there listening to you. I guess there's something about, you know, as you get growing in success, that you do have, you have these moments where you get to meet your heroes. And, 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 you know, and, and I know that's kind of part of your guys' creation story anyway with, with Connor Oberst and everything, having been such fans. But... Do you find yourself facing these situations more and more where you're put in, 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 and I know you humanize them at some point, you know, they just become human, but, but you've got to get there somehow, I, I, I guess? Um, yeah, I mean, it's always, like, scary, like, especially, like, at festivals when we see people that we admire and walking around just, like, in the catering area, like, oh, my God, there's um, Nick Cave being, eating a burrito or something, you know, it's, like, strange. And we, Does he eat burritos? I don't know if he eats burritos. <laughs> I just this is an example of what can happen at a festival, you know. Um, yeah, yeah, and it, it's. I mean, usually in those situations, I will not go up to the person just because. I don't know. You don't want to just be one of those people who just came up. I don't know. It's it's. You just kind of want to keep them as the the people that you imagine them to be or something. Not that they're going to be rude or anything. I don't know. It's just this. It's hard yeah. to explain. But you don't. It, I mean. In some ways, you do humanize, like, yeah. like Conor Oberst or like you know who we used to, you know, we still look up to, but you know we used to like be such crazy fans of, and now you know we're just friends. It's. Yeah. I mean, I don't, I don't know that I, I don't know that I want to meet David Bowie. Like that's the yeah. top of my tier right there, but I don't yeah, know that I can. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like it's, it's kind of some people you just want to like keep up there. Is, I don't know, but I mean, I'm sure if he did, he he, he would be I'm lovely. Sure be pleasant, and then, yeah. yeah, and then maybe that'd be great. I mean, that's. The thing, though, I mean, you, you just get used to it, and then they're your friends. But it still, it still isn't completely like right. you never completely get used to it. I, I do want to say, David Bowie, if you're listening, I totally would meet you if you want to, though. I'm not going to turn that down. Don't think I'm going to turn it down. Uh, I, I know Stay Gold is kind of now. Um, I'm not going to call it old, but you know, it's it's in the past. Stay Gold. Are you guys thinking about the next record? Is that already what you're working on? I mean, we're thinking about it, of course. I think we're always thinking about what to do next, but. Uh, not really working on anything right now. Just trying to just enjoy, you know, not thinking about about it for a while, or not working on it, and just doing doing other things. And that's when it'll happen by itself. Yeah, with I mean, you guys toured so much. Do you find that you have to live to be able to write? Like, do you find that you have to go out there and actually have experiences to be able to find some inspiration? I mean, you do have experiences on the road. Yeah. I mean, it's 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 a way of life. It's different than other, you know, um, situations. But uh, it's very inspiring. But you do need to get like it's too intense to like actually write when you're on the road. Like it, there's so much going on all the time. So we we need the quiet and the calm yeah. of being at home to get inspired. I think. Yeah. So so atmosphere really does play a large part in, in how you write a record. Yeah, I think so. Yeah. 
And, and in the meantime, I know that you guys do a lot of, I guess, singing on other people's albums, though. I mean, that's that's a part of your career at this point, right? Uh, well, I mean, I, I know, you know, Connor was one of them. Are, are, are there others, too? Do you guys, or is that something you'd like to do more? I mean, sure. I mean, if, if, uh, if we got an interesting, you know, offer, we're, I mean, uh, yeah, <laughs> sure. <laughs> Whoever it might be. Uh, switching, I, I guess, away from the movie, there, there's been a lot of talk in the interviews about feminism, which to me is really awesome, and it's really almost obvious, and it's almost unfortunate we're in 2015, and I guess we're yeah, still talking you, about you it. You would think know? so. Yeah. You'd, you'd like it not to be the case. But, but what, I guess, and not exactly that, what ex excited me most about hearing you guys talk about so much about this is, uh, with youth, uh, you know, comes fire, comes passion, and... and I mean, you guys are a really great place to go full on take, you know, world problems and politics and music and, and, and all of this stuff. And, and I know it's a different way of writing. Could you see yourself tackling that stuff more in, in, your, in your songs? I mean, maybe. Uh, it's, I think that's harder to do because it's kind of, a, it's a different kind of songwriting, I think. It's kind of more planned. Like you have to, like when we write, you know, now our songs are very kind of, a lot about our, our emotional life and, and so it's it's kind of easier to write about writing about political things I don't know it's um, more intellectual you have yeah. to use a different type part of your brain yeah, <laughs> but um, you want to get it right you know yeah. you want to you know if it's a personal thing it's it, it, people can sort of you know analyze it however they want and and but if it's political you kind of have just one message one clear message so I think that's different but we'll see yeah like Simon and Garfunkel's America, which you guys have covered, is not a political song. Yeah. But when I start hearing you talk in interviews, and then I see you sing that song, and I start going, you know, you, you do. You have this perspective, perception on this country that, you know, that we wouldn't have in it. And it it's almost like a really unique opportunity to say something that maybe, I guess, we wouldn't see. Yeah. Maybe. <laughs> maybe. Let me project everything on you and force you into yeah. this one right now. Uh, I love everything you guys done. The live show is so good every single time. Uh, and I cannot wait till the next thing comes out. I feel like there's a lot of other things we could talk about, like The Simpsons and, and, and things, but... Um, always. Can always <laughs> talk about The Simpsons. Yeah. <laughs> we'll do that standalone interview sometime. Yeah. Thank you guys so much. <laughs> Thank you. All right. It's Forecastle 2015. First date kit. <laughs>